In the late 2000s, Robert Rizzo, the manager for the city of Bell, manipulated his way into receiving one of the highest salaries in the country. The investigation that followed became national news, putting a spotlight on the city of Bell as its government imploded. The history of Bell runs parallel with the history of Los Angeles. You've got the native Tongva, who were wiped out so badly little of their history remains, Spain coming in, Mexico taking over, a short period where California tried to run itself, and then the United States. It was here that James George Bell bought 360 acres of the community of Obed, which was soon renamed Bell Station Ranch. Bell put down roots with his entire family, including his son Alfonso Bell Sr., who would himself go on to develop Bel Air. That's right, the city of Bell and Bel Air both came from the same family. During most of the 20th century, Bell established itself as a city and followed a pattern repeated throughout Southeast LA. That is, changes in economy, migration, and politics, resulting in white people leaving and brown people arriving. One thing that separates Bell from cities like Southgate and Cerritos, however, is its Lebanese community. In the 1970s, Lebanese immigrants began to arrive in Bell. What started with a scattered few eventually grew into an enclave of 2,000 plus Lebanese Americans. Then in the 21st century came the ravages of Robert Rizzo that left the city bewildered and abused. So picture Bell, reeling from the damage brought on by its own government. It would be understandable to find its citizens cynical and distrustful. Few would be surprised if this same paranoia began mixing with the Islamophobia that had taken root in other places in the United States. So what does it mean when in 2015, a city with an immense Latin American population elects their first ever Lebanese American mayor? At its most basic, the election showed that its people are thinking about who runs their city and therefore have a belief that the damage done can be repaired.